In today's video, we'll check out the Elecro all-in-one starter common board kit for the Arduino, which includes 15 sensors and 21 lessons. The Arduino is built into the kit, so all you need is a USB cable connected to a computer. In this video, we'll check out the kit on the Raspberry Pi 5 and on Windows 11. If you're interested in learning about electronics, programming, have about $30 to spare, and own a computer, I think you're going to have fun with this kit. Let's get started. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. If you grew up in the 80s, you may remember electronics kits like this one that were sold by Radio Shack. I remember spending hours wiring up different projects and learning how the components work. The kit we'll be looking at today is similar, but one that is fully programmable. To start, I've marked this video as sponsored because Elecro sent it to me for review, but no money exchanged hands. In fact, they sent two kits. The first kit is the Pico 2 All-in-One Starter Kit Microcontroller Board. If you'd like to see a video on that board, please let me know in the comments below. But today, we'll be taking a look at the Arduino All-in-One Starter Kit. In case you're not already familiar with an Arduino board, it's a development board that provides access to a microcontroller chip like the ATmega328. It makes creating your own custom electronics projects easier by providing a framework to reprogram the board and connect electrical circuits and much more. You can use it for very simple tasks or rather complex projects such as robotics. Inside the kit is everything you need to get started to connect to your PC, Mac, or Linux device. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use the kit from a Raspberry Pi 5 as well as a PC. In the kit, you have a moisture sensor and cable, some servo components, an IR remote control, which does include the battery, and a USB-C to USB-A cable for programming the Arduino kit. The kit includes a number of sensors. I'll highlight some of them here, such as a relay, a buzzer, an ultrasonic sensor for determining distance, a temperature and humidity sensor, three axis sensor, a light sensor, ports for connecting and expanding the kit even further, a button, IR receiver, LED, sound sensor, linear potentiometer, a servo, and a two-line LCD display. Remember you can use this kit with a PC, Mac, or Linux device. I'll start the demonstration using a Raspberry Pi 5 using PiOS Desktop. If you're not sure how to set up your Pi 5, I'll place a link up above to a video that'll help you with that. Just connect the included USB-C end to the side of the kit and the opposite end into the Pi or the computer you want to use it with. When it first powers up, there is a cool demonstration app that's pre-installed. I recommend playing around with each example before you reprogram the Arduino. You'll use the slider or linear potentiometer to select the example to run, and then we press the green button to start it. The demo app will let you test several of the sensors. Once you begin downloading your own programs, the built-in example program will be replaced. So definitely check it out before moving on to get a feel for the various ways the kit can be used. For now, we'll transition to screen capture so we can get it all set up. We'll open a browser and visit elecro.com, go to the Products tab, and locate the STEM Education and the kit for Arduino. Select the All-in-One Common Board Kit, and yes, it's pretty cheap at under 30 US dollars. At the very bottom of the page are two very important links, the user's manual and the wiki. The manual is okay. I made a few minor recommendations to Elecro that I hope will be considered in the future, but it does walk you through the projects and code examples pretty well. The wiki link provides further detail and more importantly, the code examples. Click the GitHub link at the bottom of the page, then click the green code button and download the code as a zip file. Then extract the archive and copy the three folders to the clipboard. I'm going to create an Arduino folder under the Documents folder. Just right click, select New Folder, and type in Arduino. Then paste the three folders into the Arduino folder. 
for the Arduino IDE to pick up the Libraries folder, let's rename the Libraries Uno folder to simply Libraries. That is, just remove the Uno at the end, if it exists. Next, we'll install the Arduino IDE, or Integrated Development Environment. This is the tool we'll use to load and edit code examples, build or compile the code, and upload it to the Arduino kit. To install it, open a terminal session by clicking the icon, or press Ctrl plus T, then type sudo sudo apt install arduino, then press enter. If prompted, press Y and enter, and the IDE will be installed. Now if you navigate to the programming group, you'll see the Arduino IDE icon. Click it, and the IDE will start. The first thing I recommend doing is selecting the File Menu option, and then Preferences. Under the Sketchbook location, click the Browse button, and select the folder that contains the three folders that we copied earlier. That is, Documents, and then Arduino, and click the Open button. A few other options I recommend are to check the verbose output for compilation and upload, and the checkbox to display line numbers. Once done, click the OK button and restart the Arduino IDE for the changes to take effect. Now when you select the File menu, then Sketchbook, you'll see all the example programs for the kit. Selecting one will load it into the IDE in a new window. I'll close out of the original window and now we have the very first lesson. Lesson 1, LED control in the IDE. Clicking the Upload button will compile and download the code directly to the Arduino. You can drag up the compiler window if you want to see the details. If it was successful, you should see Done Uploading. Switching back to the kit, we can see the LED is blinking every second. Just for grins, let's make a simple change to the code to add an integer variable called LED delay, and I'll set the value to 100, or 100 milliseconds. This will make the LED blink much faster. But first, we need to replace the 1 second delay with our new variable. So I'll copy the LED delay variable to the clipboard and replace the delay of 1000 with our new variable. Now click the Upload button to compile and upload the program to the Arduino. Now the LED is blinking much faster. This is just one simple example of how you can customize the program to work the way you want it to. Now we'll skip a bit ahead and select Lesson 12, which is the servo control. The servo is the small motor in the top right. When we compile this program or sketch, it unfortunately doesn't work. That's because it couldn't locate the servo.h, or header file. If this happens, there is an easy solution. From the menu, select Sketch. Then, Include Library, and you'll see all the Arduino libraries at the top, and the contributed libraries at the bottom, which are those that exist in our library subfolder. Notice that the servo library isn't there, but we can easily add it. Select the Manage Libraries option, then in the search, type servo.h. Locate the servo library released by Arduino and click the Install button. Once installed, click the Close button. Now when we compile and upload again, the compilation is successful. This is because the servo library now exists under the Arduino library section. And here is what the sketch does. It moves the servo arm left to right. However, the servo isn't properly calibrated. The movement should start from the zero position, then move to the 180 degree position, then back to zero. Let's go ahead and fix this. In the loop section of the code, copy the servo.write parenthesis pos in parenthesis semicolon line to the top of the loop. Select all the code below it, right click, and select the comment uncomment option. Now change the right position to zero. Then, when we upload the program, the arm will stay in the zero position and not move. We can then remove the screw to the servo, position the servo arm to the zero degree position, and reinsert the screw. Going back to our code, remove the myservo.write line that we copied, 
select the commented code, right click, and select comment uncomment to uncomment the code. Now upload to the Arduino and the servo arm is now in the correct position. Next we'll try another example, lesson 15, the servo angle control. This one uses the IRSEN Rev library, and while it has no issues in Windows, Linux on the Pi did for me, and it may be the same on the Mac. When you compile, you may get an error compiling for the board Arduino Uno. The problem is it's not finding the IRSEN Rev.h library, but it is added to our sketchbook. The solution is very easy, and it isn't an issue on Windows. Go to the library subfolder, then the IRSEN Rev folder, and load the IRSEN Rev.cpp or C++ file in a text editor. On line 23, change the lowercase r in Rev to an uppercase. On line 24, change the lowercase s in IRSEN to uppercase. Save the file. Then when you upload to the Arduino kit, it will succeed. This may have already been fixed by the time you see this video, but just in case it isn't, I wanted to let you know the solution. One thing I haven't mentioned, if you select the Tools menu and then the Board, you'll see that I have the Arduino Uno board selected. The port will be the USB port where the Arduino kit is connected. Now, let's check out what the sketch does. I'll click the Upload button and the project will compile and upload the program to the Arduino without any errors. With this sketch, we'll use the IR remote to tell the servo which angle we want it to move to. On the remote, press the Next button to set the servo to open. Play or pause will close it. Then, using the number pad, enter the angle you want the servo to display. I'll set it for 90, then press the EQ or Equals button. The servo will then move to the 90 degree angle. I'll do the same for 45 degrees and press the EQ button. And now it's moved to the 45 degree position. The same with 170 degrees. This is a great example of how to use the IR remote with the servo and the online documentation goes into much more detail about the code. So definitely check it out. Now let's install the Arduino IDE in Windows. Visit arduino.cc, then under Products, select Arduino IDE. Click the download link for Windows 10 and newer 64-bit to download the installer. You can donate if you'd like to support the project, or just click Just Download. Then click Just Download once again, and double-click the installer. Select I Agree, then Next and click the install button. When you click finish, the IDE will start up. You'll likely receive about three or four prompts to install some device drivers. If so, click install on each. The IDE will indicate there are some updated libraries available. Click the install all button to apply those updates. Next, we'll go to the wiki page. Links are in the video description below and then download the examples from GitHub. Click the green code button and select Download Zip. Extract the zip, and I'm going to copy the three folders into a folder on my D drive called Arduino. If you're curious about the schematics for all the circuits, there is a handy PDF in the Schematic Diagrams folder that will explain all the circuits in the kit. It's not necessary to be able to read the schematics, but a handy reference. Going back to the Arduino IDE, just like on the Pi 5, you'll want to go into the File Preferences menu option and set the sketchbook location to where you copied the three folders from the code examples. On my machine, I copied them to my D drive in a folder called Arduino. I'll also check the verbose output for compiling and upload to help identify any issues, then click the OK button. Now select the Tools menu, then Board, and under Arduino AVR Boards, select Arduino Uno. Also under Tools, you'll select Port and the COM port for the Arduino kit. If you have several listed here, you may just need to try each of them. In my case, I know it's on COM8. After making those settings, 
go ahead and restart the Arduino IDE. Now when you go to the File, Sketchbook menu, you'll see Courses Code, and you can pick a lesson to load. It will open in a new window, just close the original one. Under Sketch and Include Library, you'll also see the libraries that were found in your sketchbook folder and needed by the examples, along with some additional libraries such as the Servo Library. Now if we click the Upload button, the program will be compiled and uploaded to the Arduino on the kit. It doesn't matter if you compiled the course code on a Pi 5 or in Windows, the programs, once uploaded to the kit, work identically for either platform. There are many cool projects to explore, such as Lesson 9, the plant watering example. For this project, you'll use the moisture sensor, then connect the cable to the sensor and the other end to the port labeled A. Then, if you run your finger across both leads, it will display the soil moisture. If I had a plant, I'd stick this into the dirt, and if the moisture level gets too low, it would beep to remind you to add water. Pretty cool. Lesson number seven is another fun example. It can be used to determine the distance between an object and the ultrasonic sensor. There are many examples to explore, and of course you can mix and match code examples to help build your own custom projects. Programming with the Arduino IDE is relatively easy once you get a hang of it. It won't be long until you're creating your own programs that do some really cool stuff. Huh, I don't remember seeing this one in the course examples. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Elecro All-in-One Starter Common Board Kit for the Arduino with 15 sensors and 21 lessons. If you or someone you know is interested in learning electronics and programming, I don't think you can go wrong with this kit. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please let me know by clicking the like button. If you'd like to see more content like this or a Pico 2 kit video like this one, please subscribe. And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.